Hi everyone, uh, Mindy Dilly here, she, her, hers. I'm the Associate Director of Student Involvement, and I am here in this module to kind of go over a hot topic um, for all student organizations, the Student Activity Budget Committee, also known as SABC. Um, so in this module, we're gonna kind of go over, we're gonna go over what is SABC, and we're gonna go over some of the SABC guidelines and timelines. Um, for your requests. We're going to jump over to Triton Connect and I'm going to show you actually how to submit a budget request. And then we're going to end the module with some little helpful tidbits. Um, if I were you, this video, like I would save it or have access to it easily um, because kind of move, I, I know SABC things are kind of we don't know what's going on. Who's it? And this, this video will go over all of those things. I'll show you where to access guidelines and policies and things like that. So um, if you're going to pay attention to any module, which you should be paying attention to all of them, but if you're going to pay attention to one, please take some good notes um, of this video. So really quickly, I kind of wanted to go over what the mission of the Student Activity Budget Committee is. So obviously this group wants to provide financial support to recognize student groups at UMSL. Um, and this will help groups do things that maybe they wouldn't be able to do without that assistance. I wanted to point out the, the bolded part there on the screen though, that the purpose of SABC is to provide partial financial support. Um, you know, it is not expected that a student group solely relies on the Student Activity Budget Committee to fund all of their activities, all of their team development things, because we honestly just don't have the money for that. Um, a little historical background, in, in prior years, SABC was kind of like rolling in the dough. Um, I don't have the exact figures, but I'm fairly certain at one point that the committee was able to allocate like $200,000 a year. Well, that budget has been slashed significantly, and at most, um, we would have about 80K to hand out in a given year, 40 for each semester. Um, so unfortunately, that kind of goes quicker than we had hoped. Um, we collect data from you all to help make our case to upper folks that maybe, you know, that that bucket needs to be expanded or we need to find some different financial avenues somewhere for the student um, groups to have some funds. Um, so do know if we ever ask you to, well, we will ask you to submit like attendance records. That's for us to make the case of how successful SABC is or not successful, um, how our funds are being allocated and to kind of make sure that we're appropriately using our funds. Um, so just keep in mind that we, we do provide those financial assistance partially, um, but you shouldn't be relying on the Student Activity Budget Committee to sponsor all of your activities. So um, if you need to brainstorm with myself or someone in my office about other ways to either, you know, generate revenue or get sponsorships or whatever, we're happy to do that. Um, we just simply don't have the amount of money to fully support every student group on campus. Unfortunately, I wish we did. That would be like in an ideal world. So who makes up the Student Activity Budget Committee? I'm not sure if people like understand what that, set, that setup is. Um, so it's actually made up of between five and nine UMSL students. And it's chaired by our student program manager in the OSI. Um, right now that's Andrea Rojo. Um, and then the SGA treasurer is co-chair. Um, so those two students and then three to seven other students would come together. They meet currently bi-weekly go over the requests that are submitted, and we'll go over that in a minute. Um, and then myself as the Associate Director of Student Involvement, I just advise. So I attend the meetings, I listen in, I maybe share in terms of like UM system policies and procedures, but I wanna know like myself or Michaela, whoever's been in those meetings, we do not make any of the funding decisions. Um, and to clarify, prior to this year, that has been Michaela Wells. Moving forward, that will be myself. So if you have questions, I am now the person to kind of reach out to because we're kind of um, putting her time down to some other avenue. So students are truly making these decisions. And we're actually, if you're, if you're interested in being on this committee, we'd love to have you. Um, and we'll kind of talk more about that later. So the first thing that you need to know about the student government kind of pot of money is that there's these three buckets. Um, there's general operations, team development, and programming. 
and we're going to go into each of those budgets individually in just a moment. So these are the only areas that you can request funds from the Student Activity Budget Committee, um, and it's General Ops, Team Development, Programming. So General Operations. This is capped at $1,000 per academic year, and my office keeps track of those things. Um, this should be expenses that relate to your day-to-day -day logistical operations of your student group. Um, I, I put a few examples there, like membership regalia would fall under general operations, reservation fees for exec meetings, um, promotional items used to recruit for your student group, and office supplies if you needed binders, notebooks, pens, whatever. Um, one thing to note about member regalia, that would include like graduation cords or stoles or t-shirts. There is an SABC requirement that they can only fund $8 per item up to $800, and that's once a semester. However, keep in mind that this whole bucket is capped at 1,000. So if you buy $108 t-shirts, um, which I'm not sure if any of your groups need quite that many right now, <laughs> you would be spending $800 if, you're, if approved, and then you'd only have $200 left in this bucket for the rest of the academic year. So keep those things in mind. Um, like I mentioned, the OSI keeps track of this stuff, so if you're kind of questioning, oh, I can't remember exactly, there's always record of what's been spent um, and what's been requested. So general operations capped at $1,000 an academic year. The next kind of bucket is team development. And so that is capped at $2,000 per academic year. So it's doubled for your, um, based off of general operations. And you can only have three requests for these, a semester and a total of five a year. Um, and this must be an obvious team building developmental component. Um, SABC will not fund admissions to Six Flags or a something that's a just for fun type of event, and that no food allocation can be under team development. You have to keep in mind that the Student Activity Budget Committee is funded by tuition dollars, your all's tuition dollars, and even students who are not involved in student organizations' tuition dollars. So we kind of have to be good stewards of that money, um, and we have to kind of cap it at if my group, the Price is Right Club, is, you know, going to the movies every Tuesday as a team development, um, it's, you know, only the Price is Right Club members are able to go. One, that's not, you know, equitable or appropriate for SABC funds because the, these, these events should be open to all students. So when you get into team development, you're kind of you're kind of pushing up against that. So we have to make sure that there's a, a clear team building because we do understand that team development is important for a cohesive and successful student group. So team development, $2,000 an academic year, up to five events that year. And then our third bucket, which is actually probably one of the most used buckets from your groups, is the programming bucket. And so that is also capped at $2,000, but that is per semester. We're expecting your groups to plan events and do programs, so that's why you get kind of the largest bang for your buck out of this bucket. Um, so while it's capped at $2,000 a semester, one event cannot exceed $1,000. Um, some examples of programming include facility usage fees, if you're going to do something in the London Student Center, catering if you're going to have food at an event for your group, supplies for that specific event, door prizes, um, honorariums if you're going to have a speaker come or someone come to, to come present, which that's a whole nother kind of situation that you'll have to go through with an appearance agreement, but we can help you with that. Um, so again, there are three buckets. There's general operations capped at $1,000 per academic year. There's team development, which is capped at $2,000 per academic year. And again, you can only have five of those events um, in an academic year. Three, it's the most you can have in a semester. And then there's the third bucket that's programming that's capped at $2,000 a semester. And then one event, okay, this slide says $10,000. I need to edit that. <laughs> Oh my, that should be a thousand. Um, so hopefully you're watching this video and not just looking at the slide because we don't have $10,000 for an event. I can't even do an event for $10,000. So three buckets, I will update the slide um, for future use. 
Now we're going to kind of move into the timeline for a budget request. I think this has also been a sore subject for students moving in the past couple semesters, just with a lot of kind of different information. And here it is clearly, and we are very strict with this timeline, is that you must submit your request a minimum of four weeks in advance of your need by date. Um, and in fact, if you submit um, a request for August 1st um, for an event that is August 15th, it won't even be reviewed because that's not within or it's too close to the event. It isn't the minimum four weeks in advance. So please plan early um, with a little asterisk that you can be super early, but it must be in within the appropriate budget period. So you can't submit a budget request um, in September for an event that's happening in May. Um, we do budgets for, we'll do like an early fall at the end of the semester prior. We'll open fall events the first day of school. We'll do an early spring at the end of the fall so that you can prep your group for the next semester. Um, and then we'll do spring, probably that first day of school in the spring semester. <clears throat> if you have a large event that's going to take some time to plan, and there are some, if you wanted to meet with me or someone on SAPC, we could talk through how to kind of navigate those things. But plan as early as possible. You could honestly, first day of school, submit 15 requests for all of your events that you have planned this semester, and the, the committee would review those as appropriate. So you may not get an answer right away for something that's not until December, depending on the amount of requests a group um, that the committee needs to see. Um, but if there's a slow day, they will see as many as they can. I do want to make a comment that the committee does not meet weekly, and I'm sorry, there needs to be an S there. I did this late last night, you can tell. I will update these slides. It does not meet weekly. Um, it's bi-weekly at best. And then keep in mind holidays and breaks and stuff like that. Um, so that's why if I were you, I'm just controlling and anxious. I would try to get those requests in as soon as possible so that I wasn't risking it by waiting to the last minute. So again, what's the timeline for budget requests? Four weeks in advance. Yes, yes, four weeks in advance. Um, but I would even suggest more again. So four weeks in advance, four weeks in advance, four, four weeks in advance. <laughs> um, I think we're going to jump over to Triton Connect now and do kind of an example together. Hopefully so you all are familiar with Triton Connect. And if not, please do that. That's pretty important. You're going to sign in with your UMSL credentials. I sign into Triton Connect daily, so mine's kind of saved in there. But really where you're going to start is you're going to go to your organization who wants to request the funds. You're going to go to their portal. One thing to note is only the president and treasurer have access to this budget function. So for those of you that aren't a president or treasurer, you may be like, where is, th where is this? I mean, you have to be a president or treasurer in Triton Connect to have access to that. So if you need to get your officers updated, do that first. Um, so I'm gonna use PRISM as an example. Um, and I am an officer in the PRISM portal for the sole purposes. And we, you're going to want to go to this like budget. This is the easiest way for me anyway. There's a couple ways to get to it, but I always go to this budget card here. And again, only if you're a president or treasurer, um, and it has to be during the budget period. So a good example would be like right now, today is July 26th. There is no budget open because fall budget requests are no longer open and early fall, but yeah, early fall budget requests are no longer open and we haven't opened the general like fall um, <clears throat> other budget requests. So we have a, an example budget, budget period open called sole example budget. Um, so you have to first make sure that that is like, what, what budget period am I in? Um, and for this purposes, we're doing the sole example budget. Um, you'll see we've made a few already just examples to prepare for this um, video, and I'll kind of show you what that looks like in a moment. But this is a really good, right here will be the timeline for those, that particular budget period. Um, if you look at, you know, early fall, you'll notice that the deadline was April 12th at 1155 p.m. Um, and the deadline to spend money for that was in May. 
So this is a good way to kind of see, over, see the overall timeline for that particular budget period. So I want to create a budget. Um, PRISM is going to host a program in August, one of the first couple of weeks. Um, and again, this is the first sole purposes. Um, so we'll do a programming. Um, let's do an let's do an LBGT, LGBTQ plus. Um, oh my gosh, history month event. And we're going to do like a trivia event. We're just going to host it in the OSI suite um, because PRISM oversees the safe space here. Um, they've talked to me about having the space and there's no charge for them um, to be in that. So we're going to put a little description here. Documents. This is super important. So this is going to be your kind of documentation for why you need the money that you're about to ask for. Um, so say this event was going to be in the Millennium Student Center, Century Room A. I would need to upload like a, an email from the event services folks um, or even a confirmation from them of how much that was going to cost to the documentation. If I was going to order catering from Sodexo, I would need to upload an itemized quote for what that needs to be. Um, the student Student Activity Budget Committee isn't going to approve funds based on vague, arbitrary amounts um, and items. So for the sake of this event, um, as an example, I don't have all of those things, um, but you'll need to make sure that you are as detailed as possible um, in your request. Um, one thing to note is that even before the SAPC meets, I kind of do an initial review of the requests and will communicate like, oh, hey, um, we need further documentation of your Amazon order. Can you please screenshot your cart with the individual items and upload that or whatever you need? Um, so I will try to be a little forward thinking so that the SAPC committee meeting doesn't come and go and you've missed out. So that's another good reason why you should request um, a little earlier so that I have that time to kind of check it out for you. Um, so event location, I've already mentioned, it's going to be in the Millennium, or in the Office of Student Involvement Suite, because that's where this organization kind of sits. It has to be four weeks in advance, and since it's July 22nd, we're going to do um, LGBTQ plus History Month is in September, so we're actually going to do the 6th, and that's four weeks in advance, it's actually a little more, so in case I do something wrong, I have plenty of time. Um, it's only going to be a one-day event, so we're going to keep that the same as September 6th. And I'm going to expect about 30 people to show up. It's kind of a casual event for folks to get to know PRISM um, and our safe space here in the Office of Student Involvement um, and enjoy some trivia and, and games. So keep in mind, in an actual budget request, I would have uploaded documentation for all of the charges that I'm, or all the monies that I'm about to ask for. So on the next page, these are by line items. So I don't want you to put um, other programming expenses, $500, all things for the event. Um, you need to be specific. So other programming um, needs, I'm gonna do $100. And this is gonna be our Amazon order for decorations. And in the documentation, I would have uploaded my Amazon cart screenshotted so that the SABC can see the itemized items that I'm purchasing. Well, I also, you know, want to have a trivia game going on. And I know some friends that have a trivia business and they're willing to create for me legit trivia questions. Um, and that's going to, they're, they're going to charge $50. Um, so $50, that's going to be trivia questions. And then once that's done, I'm going to need to print those trivia cards for the event. Um, so again, I'm going to do that. I'm just going to do that through the print shop. And I've reached out to them and they sent me a quote for $20. I've submitted that in my documentation. And in the little notes, I'm going to say printing of trivia cards from the print shop. So see how itemized it is? Um, at this event, we're not gonna have food, so I don't have to worry about that. But if I did, that would just be another item. And there's um, one for food catering expenses. Um, the Sodexo order was probably $300. Sodexo catering. 
And again, in my documentation, I would have uploaded that itemized quote. Um, if I was going to have this in the century room, like I mentioned, we would do um, venue rental fee, let's say that's $75, rental fee for century room A. And in my documentation, I would have uploaded a quote from Rachel or Kevin or the event services staff that says how much that, that room is going to be. So I, I, I understand that kind of takes some pre-work, but the SABC needs to be good stewards of our money and we need to make sure that we know where that's going. So however, my event doesn't need those things. So then you're just going to hit save and then you're done. You're able to see your pending. So I, you can see I, I did a, an example of that just to make sure it all worked out. Michaela did an example the other day just to make sure we had the sole example budget period updated. And there it is. And you're always able to see these pending things. Um, this little this little uh, green light, yellow light, red light kind of shows the status of your event. And there will also be notes if some if I've if I've checked this and you've needed additional documentation. I want to kind of show you really quick what your request looks like on my side of things as an administrator of these items. So I'm going to pop over to my administration side, and you can see I'm an administrator for the sole example budgets, and I'm going to look for for any. Um, budget requests that have been submitted by PRISM. So this is what I see. Looks very similar. I'm able to see your description, who submitted it and when they did, event details. Here will be all of your documentation for your kind of evidence of, of your, your funds that you're requesting. Um, I'm able to see exactly what you just inputted here, trivia questions, printing of that, Amazon order, um, we will, the, the, the student government, student association, a student activity budget committee, um, we'll see this and kind of go through all the details. They have a rubric that they score each group on. Um, a part of that is also how up to date and accurate and active your Triton Connect portal is. Because if you're asking for money for an event, but you're not really using Triton Connect, then that, that's kind of silly, right? Triton Connect is where we expect groups to be in and, and events to be posted. So you'll need to make sure that that's also an item that you keep in mind that you're keeping your Triton Connect updated and active. Um, we'll go through um, and all I'm going to be, you know, say I did not attach the Amazon specific order. I just attached the total. Mindy, as the advisor, will click this You'll see that my comments will be seen by the officers of the group and by school administrators. That would be me. And you will also be notified by email. So I'll be like, hey, Mindy, um, thanks for the request. If I can type. Nope, apparently I can't. <laughs> um, SABC needs itemized. Um, itemized prices in order to review this request, this item in your request. And so I'll post that and people will get a notice who submitted the, the, the request and then they'll have an option to go in and add that. Um, you're always kind of, it keeps track. So that's why we kind of want things to always be in Triton Connect because then we don't have to worry about, well, who responded? What email is that? Um, and it's right in Triton Connect. It'll be a, a chat log. Um, if it's approved, um, you know, say you submitted the itemized thing. There's a few things on there that either are against policy or maybe your group didn't register on time. So you get the, the penalty. So really SABC was only able to a lot you $90. And that's still great. <laughs> so, so we'll do all of those things and then you will see that on your side. So that's kind of the budget request um, situation in Triton Connect. Um, my biggest tip to you is just be as detailed as possible. If you have questions prior to a budget request, I'm happy to chat with you. Um, Cause we wanna make sure that we are allocating funds appropriately. But we also like, we have the funds to help you and we want to. We just wanna make sure that we're not, you know, 
blowing a thousand dollars on an event that only two people are going to be in. It's not very well organized. And so that that's, we're here to help you if you need that. So that's kind of what it looks like on our side. Um, just know it, you know, we see the things that you submitted. Um, and, and to be honest, we're not, one thing that we kind of ran into is some groups were like, well, you know that we host this event every year. Um, you never know who's on the student budget committee and if they know everything, every detail, even us, like I've been here six years, I know what events you all host, but I maybe don't know the details. So this just needs to be as detailed as possible, um, itemized um, in your documentation, budget proof items. And I'm always happy to help you with that. So I'm gonna jump back over to our presentation and wrap up with a few things. And so we are here, we did that example together. Um, I do want to point out that a budget request is not a payment request. So that's a whole other process. So once you've been allocated money from the SABC, you then have to request when you want us to buy you things and pay people. Um, that request is pretty easy. It's also in Triton Connect. Um, but no, like just because you get allocated the money does not mean that things are automatically bought for you. That's another process. And you should know... I, we don't want to do all these processes. <laughs> it causes more work for everybody. Um, just being part of a, a UM system, there are things that we have to keep track of and record and have record of. And this is the best way that we can, we have found to do it. So you should know no one enjoys all these processes. <laughs> um, and we are just as confused sometimes as you are, um, but we're happy to help kind of navigate this together. I wanted to end really quickly with some helpful tidbits in navigating SABC. Um, these are just some random things that maybe wouldn't have come up in other slides, um, but allocations are for specific purposes only. So remember those line items that we put in? Um, you, you know, I got $20 for printing the cards at the print shop. I can't decide to not print the cards and use the $20 for chips. Um, it is pretty much like buy item, um, and for certain events, it's not just money given to you, it's for a specific purpose. And again, that's required of us. It makes things difficult, we understand. Events must upload attendance into Triton Connect if you're SABC funded. I kind of mentioned this earlier. Um, and again, we're not trying to add extra work. We're trying to be able to make the case to other folks that SABC funds are being used appropriately, that maybe we need more and things like that. So if you need help, I'm doing the attendance in the Trent and Connect. I'm happy to help you with that, um, but it is really important. And if your group does not upload attendance, then you are no longer eligible to receive SABC funds. It's that important. We are also not able to fund gift cards or vouchers. That's a UM system policy, unfortunately. Um, so we can't get um, Amazon cards as, as giveaways or things like that. That's, again, a UM system role. We also can't do payroll or salaries or stipends. So SABC can't fund um, your social media chair, $10 an hour um, to, to run your Instagram. That's just, a, again, a UM system rule. No exclusive events. So SABC only funds, of, funds events that are open to everybody. And I kind of mentioned that earlier too. You know, SABC is funded by student tuition dollars and fees, and therefore they must be open to everyone. Um, SABC funds are not to be involved in fundraising activities. So I know this kind of got gray the past couple areas. If you're trying to raise money either for self-generated revenue or for a philanthropic endeavor, SABC funds are not appropriate for that. Um, they're not going to float you money to pay for something where you're then getting the revenue or then donating it. So unfortunately, all fundraising activities, is, they are excluded from the SABC funding pots. Communication is through Triton Connect. I showed you that, that it kind of keeps a track of the, the chat. That's helpful for when... I'm like, oh, did I chat with them? Did I ask them to upload that? Oh, they did, cool. Like we try to do that as much as possible. I know sometimes, oh, something's not working. I'm gonna email you. Um, and that's why if you see this email on the bottom of the slide, sabc at umsl.edu, that is where all your SABC questions, items should be going. And again, that's just so I don't have y'all my email. I'm sure your emails look this way too. 
I get millions of junk. I get a ton of emails. I get quick thank you emails, which are great, but that's just another email. So anything about SABC related needs to go to the SABC inbox. And I will check that myself or Andrea. Um, and it just keeps things more organized and you'll get a better response that way. Um, one thing that we realized this past semester that no one knew is that if you put a $0 request in, it gets automatically approved because yeah, Train Connect is going to approve a $0 request and then I, we will never see it. So, um, if you forget to put in a, a dollar amount, you still can submit the request, which is kind of silly. Um, but then we had a group being like, hey, no one ever said anything about this request. You could have told us it was that we forgot the amount. We never saw it. The, the, the platform just approves zero dollar requests um, and it, it never even came into my dashboard. So those are just a, kind of a few little random tidbit things that have come up. Um, again, if you have questions, the SABC at umsol.edu inbox is great. Um, we're working on updating all of the materials on the OSI website, um, the new SABC like handbook manual is already on there if you want to go check it out. In fact, please do. Um, I use that as a resource for this presentation. I understand that there's a lot of nuances, a lot of logistics, a lot of details that are confusing and sometimes hard to understand. You should know that we empathize with you and we understand your concerns. This is the best that we can do with what we're required to report and keep track of. Um, if anyone has a, a, a suggestion to how to make processes more user friendly, we are open to that. Um, but our, our goal, I think, for this coming year is just to be as transparent as possible, as communicative as possible, um, and try to be as helpful as possible. So. Um, please reach out to that SABC email if you have specific questions because we want to make sure that you all um, get your funding for your events and host great things for our students. So thank you for sitting through this um, presentation with me. Um, please refer to it as you need. Um, I understand there's a lot of details, so I'm ready for the follow-up emails. <laughs> And I hope you all have a wonderful last few days of summer and we'll see you in a couple of days on campus.